So this is the second of two videos that have to do with stress, strain, and elastic moduli. So um, this one is on the specifics. The previous one introduced what stress was, was, what strain was, and so forth. And now we want to talk about the three kinds of stress. So we start with tensile, tensile stress, which has to do with if you had a block and you were pulling on both sides perpendicularly um, in the center of both of them, and you were pulling this way, that would be what's called tensile stress. And so <clears throat> I've tried my best to, to reproduce diagrams that relate to this. So you can see the delta L there um, in the chart, delta L right here. That delta L is the amount stretched. Usually that's not going to be very much. Um, but delta, So L uh, ought, or L0 uh, there at the bottom, down here, L0, that's how... how long it was originally. And then L0 plus delta L is how long it is after uh, stretching. And so force, this is for the perpendicular force, that little upside down T stands for perpendicular. The force is perpendicular uh, to the surface of it. And A, of course, is the area of the surface, the direct surface it's pulling on, not the volume, but the area. So the stress is going to be the force divided by the area that the force is, is working on. Force divided by the, the area. And the strain, sorry I messed up the first time I wrote it, the strain is going to be the fractional increase of length, the delta L divided by L. So um, that was the drawing. Here is the writing. <clears throat> so tensile stress is going to be the perpendicular force divided by the, the surface area that it's pulling on, and the tensile strain is going to be the, the change in length divided by the original length, delta L over L0. And so then there, there is a constant. Remember that as long as you don't rip it, um, as long as it's within small, small uh, amounts of force uh, with regard to the tolerance of, of the solid, um, you're going to have a constant. These are proportional uh, to each other. And so the, the elastic modulus in this case is called Young's modulus. Young's modulus is the constant uh, of the ratio of stress to strain um, when it comes to tensile uh, stress. By the way, compressive stress is the same. It's just pushing in on the sides um, perpendicular. So we just simply do a little algebra here. If the stress is F over A and the strain is delta L over L0, uh, then we just kind of do our thing. F ends up cross multiplying with, with L0 and A ends up cross multiplying with delta L, and there you have it. Um, so you have a formula for finding uh, Young's modulus. And in the book, there is a chart that tells you what Young's modulus is for different kinds of, of solids. Okay, there you have it. Tensile stress, when you're pulling perpendicular, compressive, compressive stress when you're pushing uh, perpendicular. Okay. <clears throat> Bulk stress is a second kind of stress, and the easiest way to think about bulk stress is to think of a diver who's under the ocean and has, uh, has this stress perpendicular to the diver at all points of the diver. And because it's, because it's complete around, it's, it's perpendicular to the diver at all points of the diver, um, we might call this pressure, um, uh, atmospheric pressure, for example. Uh, I'm not... I'm not really feeling it right now, but if I were to go, you know, into certain uh, climates, if I were to go underwater or if I were to go up, uh, you know, to Denver or something like that, maybe I would begin to feel the difference in pressure. There is a unit at the bottom here, an atmosphere, one atmosphere, ATM. Um, one atmosphere is basically the, the normal amount of pressure exerted on a body at sea level. So the kind of pressure that I'm, I would experience at sea level is called one atmosphere. It's 1.013 uh, times 10 to the fifth uh, pascals, if you remember pascal from the previous video, as a unit of pressure uh, or of um, force as it relates to um, uh, stress. And then, uh, or it's 14.7 pounds per square inch if you're more familiar with, with that. That's one atmosphere. Okay, so the diagram here again is the idea of bulk stress where something, maybe this is a block underwater, where it is contracted on all sides equally 
because of bulk stress. Forces, again, coming perpendicular. Uh, upside down T means perpendicular. Forces coming perpendicular at all the different points of the cube. So, again, very similar to the tensile stress, bulk stress is the force divided by the area. Um, and there, I assume, like, for example, the force at the top pushing on the area at the top. Um, but uh, we might just call that pressure, uh, which is equal all over um, the surface of, of this. Um, and the bulk strain is then formulated in terms of volume. So instead of it being the change in length divided by the initial length, it's the change in volume divided by the, um, the initial volume. Um, so to put this in writing, pressure, again, is the, the perpendicular force divided by the area where that's exerted, but it's going to be true of the whole thing. Um, and the bulk volume strain is going to be the change in volume divided by the initial volume. So when we talk about the bulk modulus, stress divided by strain, uh, if we just call that F over A at the top, uh, the change in pressure um, divided by the change uh, in the strain. Um, so we could have rewritten it, and the book does, as delta P uh, times the initial volume divided by delta V um, is another way to do it. Notice it's negative because we're talking about something that decreases um, the volume. Okay, so there you have it, bulk or volume stress, which leads us to the third kind of stress mentioned in this section. Uh, oh, it doesn't actually. Uh, compressibility is mentioned here. Compressibility is the bulk modulus, the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. So if the bulk modulus gives us the ratio of the constant ratio of stress to strain, um, then the compressibility tells us um, how easily compressed it is, um, which is one over the bulk uh, uh, modulus. So anyway, uh, so we just flip the flip the chart uh, from the previous one. The delta P goes on the bottom, you know, and so forth. Uh, compressibility, the capacity of something to compress under uh, pressure. Okay, um, the final stress in this section is shear stress, and this is like the kind of stress that scissors are cutting a ribbon, where you have it both going up and down at the same time, or in the diagram, uh, instead of it pulling perpendicular uh, in the middle, it's pulling uh, parallel to the surface at the top and parallel to the surface at the bottom. So you have force pulling in two different uh, directions. And here we say that the, the force parallel, though, so those, that's not the number 11, that's the symbol for parallel, the force parallel to the A, uh, to the area uh, at the top, um, divided by the area of the top, is going to give you the shear stress. And then shear strain is calculated with regard to how far it's pulled on both sides, divided by um, the initial uh, height. Um, and I'm sorry for the bad... Uh, drawing. So to put it in words, the shear stress again is the parallel force um, divided by the area of that it's parallel to, and then the shear strain is going to be the change on each side of of, of length but from the pulling divided by the initial height. So there you have it. Um, the shear modulus is stress over strain again. Again, we simply do a, a simple uh, division. Algebra cross multiplies, and we end up with FH over uh, AX. This has been the rest of this section on stress, strain, and elastic moduli. In Young and Friedman's University Physics, um, th at least that's what I have it queued to, section 11.5, uh, I believe it is.